Hey guys, Ariel here. Today we'll be reviewing Noragami. It was a really fun anime to watch and review. Thank you to those who recommended this anime for review. So let's shop for me! So, according to Wikipedia, Hiyori Iki was a regular middle school student until she was hit by a bus while trying to save the life of a tracksuit wearing person named Yato. This incident causes her to transform into a half phantom. Soon after that, she learns that Yato is a god and she ends up being dragged into the worlds of gods while having to attempt to stay in the world of the living. Well, first off, it's great how unique the story is that there are things ranging from major gods, regalias, and phantoms. The anime itself had a lighthearted plot that didn't really follow the manga in the last two episodes, but the anime itself was centered a bit more on the comedy and the humorous bits rather than the actual conflicts. Of course, they do with a bit more internal conflict since these characters are mortal. There are also moments when the watchers can really be on the edge of the seat by the suspense that the Noragami provided the watchers with. The plot itself was good, but the major conflicts don't really stand out against the repetitions that Yato provides with all of the I want and shine junk. It really showed lots of potential as the story itself, though. Apparently, the main character Yato is a golly that can rarely exist, so he has to do any anyone's wishes for the total of 5 yen. And it can be anything from building dog houses to killing the Ayakashi, where evil dark spirits and scrubbing bathtubs. Along the way, when he is almost hit by a bus, Hiyori, which is one of the rare people who can see the gods, pushes him out of the way, getting hit herself. Because of this, her soul slips out of her body in the form of a little tail, and later finds out that that soul tail means that she's a half phantom. So Yato doesn't really go through a lot of character development, but he does make an effort to become a bit more, a bit more organized and supportive after he meets Hiyori for a bit. He's also a great artist, but he can be extremely annoying sometimes. Yato is also quite an interesting character. He has a really unique way of teaching his regalia, Yukine, how to behave. He has lots of expressive emotions, and his voice actor 
Hiroshi Kamiya really did a really great job. Well, Hiro Iki is a well-developed character, first off. She seems like she has split personalities and is somewhat ignorant of other people's opinions and emotions. She ignores how hard Yato works to just get five grand calls from lazy. She seems a bit poorly written. However, a quick over overview of her character seems kind of friendly, seeing that she pushed Yato out of the way from a bus, and then Yukina comes to her house for a nice place to, place to sleep instead of an abandoned shrine. However, she tempts Yukina into her room because he's scared of the dark and he sees her cleavage when she's sleeping and he's tempted to touch her body, causing Yato to be stung by Yukina's bad intentions. Her character later gets cleaned up with the manga, but in the anime, Hiyori just seems like a cheerleader to the boys and seeming a bit annoying in many, many places. Yukine, Yato's regalia, or also known as his divine weapon, is a teenager eternally in puberty, which, is cause, which causes a lot of trouble for Yato. He died in his teenage years and was found by Yato when him and Hiyori are fighting off an Ayakashi, which of course, Hiyori causes to follow her. Yato names him Yukine and calls his battle name, and Yukina takes the form of a katana with bandages wrapped loosely around it. They work smoothly together, and when Yukina takes his human form, the two main protagonists realize that he is a cold person. He is tempted to do many bad things, which stings Yato in the po almost to the point of death and makes almost makes him a an Ayakashi fandom, phantom, which, makes, which prowls the earth providing everyone ne with negative emotions. Yukina is the character with most character development, or transformation I should, say, I should say, after that whole episode with Yato coughing up blood and Yukina almost becoming a haunted ghost. Amazing. Okay, I'm going to re-say the Yukina part so you can edit this part out, because I feel like I could have done a better job if I tried. Okay, I'll start after three. Yukine, Yato's regalia, or also known as his divine weapon, is a teenager eternally in puberty, which causes a lot of trouble for Yato. He died in his teenage years and was found by Yato while him and Hiyori were fighting off an Ayakashi, which of course Hiyori caused it to follow her. Yato names him Yukine, and calls his battle name, and Yukine takes the form of a katana with bandages wrapped loosely around it. They work smoothly together, and when Yukina takes his human form, the two main protagonists may realize that he's a cool person and he is tempted to do bad things, which sings Yato almost to the point of death and almost makes him an Ayakashi fandom, which prowl the earth, providing everyone with negative emotions. Yukina is a character with most character development satisfactorily, or transformation, I should say, after that whole episode with Yato coughing up blood and Yukina becoming a haunted ghost. Amazing. So, the opening girl wants me as the closing song. The opening was catchy and a really fun song to listen to, and the closing song did a really good job of finding, sounding calm and appealing. The background music did a really good job knowing when to come in and what kind of soundtrack it needed. There are some parts I literally could not tear my eyes away from the screen to the soundtrack. The background music was done well. And the animation, I was looking forward to this. The characters moved really smoothly with lots of elements to film in them. The fighting scenes were more dramatic and attractive with lots of movements and wonderful effects. Some parts can be seen a bit more over the top with Kafuku, the god of poverty, a reactive personality and reactions. When some gods used the regalias or divine weapons, special abilities, everything got jumbled up and I had a hard time keeping track and it jumped from one scene to the other after lagging a little bit. The movements of the characters were great, but sometimes more is less. Noragami was a really good time waster and it entertained me. There are lots of things bad about it, but there are also the good. It's fun to watch, and because of that, there's going to be season 2. I'm excited for it, and I actually like Noragami quite a lot. So if I've added up the scores from plot, characters, animation, sound, and just my personal enjoyment, and I've come to a score of 7.2 out of 10, I give this anime a title of Just Okay, an anime that is only a bit more than mediocre. This anime is licensed by Funimation and is streamable on Crunchyroll or Funimation.com. 
So, if you like this review, please review the video. And if you want to see more reviews in the future, be sure to subscribe. Other than that, Janet.